I could literally sit here and do this all day. <laughs> the DJI RS3. Look at your boy getting the inside scoop on the latest tech. Not something I usually do, but I personally am such a huge fan of the RS2. And as a solo filmmaker who uses a very small collection of tools, I can contribute a lot of my success the past two years to the RS2. So I was really keen when DJI reached out to me with the opportunity to try out the new version of that, the RS3. To test this guy out, I flew to Vancouver, BC, a cool city on the west coast of Canada, where I made a short film about my good friend, Connor Emini, who is a triathlete who became the youngest person ever to complete an Ironman triathlon on all six continents, excluding Antarctica. Here's a quick little glimpse of what that looked like out there. Note that all the shot on footage, the footage that I was actually filming the short film on, none that's warp stabilized in post, nothing slowed down. This is what the footage was actually looking like coming out of the gimbal. <laughs> so pumped on that footage that we were able to get from Connor, hoping to complete and put that little short film together for you all to see in a couple days. But overall, my first experience with the RS3, going out, filming an actual project, there are a handful of really cool updated features that they integrated into this. But before we talk about all good, I just wanna start out with the bad news. Figure it's easier to deliver bad news first and then good news, because there's a ton of good news. Just one quick bad news that I wanna deliver, one little bone I'd like to pick with DJI about the RS3. So the RS3 is unlike the RS2 in that the RS2 was mainly kind of like a one size fit all gimbal. There was only one version of it. It worked great. You could fit some pretty decent sized camera packages on there. I was able to fit a Sony FX6 with a 24 to 70 on that thing. It was able to fly it pretty smoothly. Now the RS3 is being released right now in two different versions, the RS3 and then the RS3 Pro. The RS3 is what I have right here when I was given the test and it's kind of made for the solo filmmaker, content creator, person who's using smaller camera packages. And then to the best of my knowledge, the RS3 Pro is being released for people who are operating with bigger camera packages than say this, like a Canon R with a 24 to 70, like a beefier Alexa Mini with a heavier lens set on it. And I think the RS3 Pro has features that allows you to work better with a team versus a solo person. That being said, the RS3, what I have, is significantly smaller than the RS2 is. For most solo filmmakers, that's a total non-issue. If you're rocking a camera similar to mine, the FX3, the Canon R5, the Canon R, which is on here perfectly, you wanna throw 2470 on, it bounces perfectly. Pay payload is still three kilograms. But the RS2 did have a payload of 4.5 kilograms, which allowed you to sneak more camera package onto this. Griffin Conway, shout out my lad Griffin. He came out to Vancouver to help me shoot the BTS footage of me using the gimbal. And he brought his Canon C70 and wasn't able to balance his C70 on the RS3, whereas he would have been able to balance that on the RS2. It didn't even come close to balancing on the RS3, if I'm being honest. But I will say the RS3 is a heck of a lot lighter than the RS2. If you're a noodle like me, you'll find yourself fatiguing a lot less often than if you were using the RS2. It's much lighter, look at that having no issues right now. All jokes aside, that is a really huge thing if you're shooting all day, you know, especially by yourself. The last thing you wanna do is having to put down the gimbal because your arm's given out on you. So that's a good feature. Yeah, overall, the division of the two models of the RS3 and the size not being able to fit a little bit bigger cameras or having giving myself a little more space in the back here, that's my biggest critique of the RS3. But I, I would like to quickly dive into the good because there are a lot of really great things about this and 
Just want to get to it before the DJI gods strike me down. <laughs> like I mentioned in why DJI probably came to me to try out the RS3 is I have been a solo filmmaker creating high quality films, what I think is high quality films, uh, <laughs> for a few years now, completely by myself, doing the directing, shooting, producing, lighting. It's all stressful, all really rewarding, but there's really two main things that come to my mind when I think of the tools that I want to use to go into this solo filmmaking that aren't going to overwhelm me. If I'm bringing a tool, it needs to be reliable, and it needs to be super simple. The Project in Vancouver was the perfect example for me to try out the RS3. I was solo filmmaking, lots of shots, ever-changing weather in the Pacific Northwest, very small weather windows where we were getting sunlight and not rain. Tight schedule, and then to top it all off, I was trying to film all these very dynamic movements that come with someone training for a triathlon, whether it's the cycling, the running, the swimming. Reliable and simple is what I needed out of the RS3. That's exactly what I got. The first and most important aspect when we're talking about a gimbal and how great it is, is how stable is the footage that you're getting out of it. So the RS3 uses DJI's third generation stabilization algorithm. I'm gonna be completely honest right now. This thing is buttery smooth. I was riding in vehicles, I was running, I was on a one wheel, hitting bumps left and right. Everything was super, super smooth and very limited to absolutely no bumps that I was seeing in my footage. Not to mention this thing is super smooth mode, which I honestly feel like I didn't need to try, but I ended up trying it. Cranked the lens to 70 millimeter, did a really high flying cycling shot and it was just like, it was so epically smooth the entire time. I was, I was truly blown away. Then just working by myself, I just want things to be simple. I want as little steps and barriers as possible between what I see in my head and what this camera is actually capturing. And I think there's a lot of cool updates that they made to the RS3 that make the workflow a lot smoother for you. In my opinion, the coolest and most notable is the auto access unlock, the thing that we started with at the beginning of the film. Beyond being just incredibly satisfying, this is a really convenient tool for someone who's running around on the fly. When you're done with a shot, you pack it up, all you do is hold in the power button, it closes up, locks, and when you're driving around and you see a really beautiful shot, you wanna quick hop out of the van, grab the gimbal, hold the on button, no balancing or anything, no fidgeting with the little unlock mechanisms. It's unlocked, ready to shoot, perfectly balanced, and I think that's very huge in being able to capture those run and gun on the fly types of moments. The RS2 has all those unlocking mechanisms. I can't tell you how many times I forgot to unlock one. I turn on the gimbal, the gimbal tries to turn on, it freaks out and shuts down. I'm losing a ton of seconds trying to get my gimbal up and running. The next most notable in my opinion, something that I've really been enjoying using is the wireless Bluetooth record button on the back here. Yes, the RS2 has this record button, but the difference is you don't need a wire anymore. The gimbal connects directly to your camera through Bluetooth. So if you are running on a one wheel or doing something on the fly, you don't have to worry about, you know, knocking the gimbal off balance by trying to press the record button. You can just hit the button on the back one hand, no extra wires, no extra setup. It's, it's really simple. Then like the RS2, the RS3 still does have the little micro adjustment knobs for the tilt axis that you're able to use to make those micro adjustments. I honestly wish they would put this micro adjustment knob on all the axes. It's got the dual quick release plates again, so you can take the camera on and off without having to completely rebalance everything. The touchscreen on the back is much bigger. It's a 1.8 inch touchscreen that works a lot more effectively in my opinion. And my favorite thing is they took the switch from PTF to FPV mode out of the touch screen and what they did was put it on the side here. Now FPV mode is cool. It's a great feature to have on this thing. But when I'm just trying to get a normal shot, I don't want to accidentally be hitting the back of the touch screen and the thing all of a sudden flips into FPV mode. So I'm glad that with the, the updated version, they put that switch right on the side here. Like the RS2, the battery life on this thing lasts all freaking day. I never had to worry about the battery running out, but if you are worried about the battery running out, R3 has a really cool update where you can hot swap batteries out and pop new ones in. I could do this all day, just on and off. It's so cool to me. And it's got the updated follow focus. It's got the Raven Eye transmitter, all that cool stuff, which I tried out. 
works really well. If you are someone who wants to pour your own focus and do all that, that's great. Again, I want as little stuff as possible, so I'm gonna rely on the autofocus inside my Sony FX3. But it's cool to know that those accessories exist and they fit really well on the RS3 and they work really well with it, which is all that matters. Yeah, the whole Vancouver shoot was really tricky. A lot of weather changes throughout the day. I found myself on multiple different vehicles. I was even on a kayak at one point, gliding along Connor as he was swimming in this ice cold freezing bay. But the size of the RS3 and all the updates that they included in it made this project as a solo filmmaker a lot more manageable in my opinion. It is something I would recommend for people upgrading, but maybe if you're looking to use a beefier setup, like I mentioned, RS3 probably isn't going to be your move. Maybe the RS3 Pro or sticking with the RS2. Yeah, look out for that short film that I did with Connor coming out in a couple days. Nothing crazy, just a really simple video where I could showcase this and just tell a simple, like, nice little story about my friend. All right, thanks for watching this one. I love you. Thank you.